Excited to be joined by former podcast guest, now current podcaster. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> for Dravlon Baseball, Kyle Bodie. Thanks right. for jumping on with us, Kyle. Thanks for having me, Sheets. No doubt, man. So, again, we're right uh, in, outside the trade show doors. Uh, you guys being one of our, our partners and certainly uh, one of the most, uh, I guess, uh, packed booths in our trade show. How is it when you come to convention? You get to hang out here at ABCA. How is it for you? It's tremendous, man. I mean, it, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's packed for sure. Yeah. Uh, we've added a bunch of mini talks and stuff, but it's yes. it's great to be able to connect with all the coaches here. Like yep. we've talked a lot about about how like to me that the event is defined by Division Two, JC, NAI, right. like development, right? Yep. And that's what we're passionate about. Yes. So it's awesome to finally connect with all the people who've been purchasing products, have been interested in it, like Driveline Plus, our new stuff. And sure. It's just yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. Well, yeah, it's been really cool. Obviously, working between you and Mike. Uh, for the last few years and, and uh, getting more entrenched in what you guys are about and, and becoming friends and all that good. But it was really neat to see this morning you tweeted the schedule of the talks that were going to be happening at your booth. Now, if I am a vendor, I'm an exhibitor, I'm looking at that going, man, those dudes are maximizing their opportunity in the trade show. Was that your approach? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, every year we learn something new about right. how we want to approach it. Um, and so we just try to take the coaches' feedback. You know, a couple yeah. months ago, we sent out emails and say, like, what do you want to hear more? And they say, we love your stuff, but right. how are you going to use it at junior college? How are you going to roll it out? So we sure. targeted the talks around that so we could maximize it. Because, yeah, well, people like to come into the booth and talk, and we love that. Yeah. They also want structure to it. So we kind of divided it in two, where it's like we're going to have a lot of free flow time, but then we're also going to have structured talks where the coaches' most re uh, most requested topics. I love yeah. it. Okay. Um, obviously, we crushed uh, two Expo Theater presentations today. Yep. How'd those go? They were filled. Yeah, to the it gills. was good. It was yeah, thanks it was for the good. tweet. It was great. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're doing everything we can, but we just can't account for the amount of people that want to catch up with what you guys are doing. No, it was awesome. It was really good. It was good to have Robert, you know, Woodard and Yeski and Conger. Yeah. It was a great mix because you have I think it's really easy to dismiss something like a Yeski or a Woodard does. Oh, sure. they have big D1 resources. And yep. it's like, and by having Conger there and like my story of starting up, you know, I've been yep. in part time job since I was 14, full time employee since I was 16. I yep. grew up in inner city Cleveland. I think it was interesting to show, like, hey, like, Conger had no resources. I had none when I started, all right. self funded, no loans. Right. You know? And so, like, how do you build that up? So it was really cool. I mean, that's Gosh. what I'm passionate about. I would love to spend the next hour, and I think all these coaches would as well, and going through your story. Maybe that's a future episode, me and you can There we do. go. Yeah. But I do want to get into this. Um, I think if you if you look from the outside and you're looking at driveline, and certainly you know what two words I'm getting ready to say, weighted baseballs, you're much, much more than that. Take this opportunity. Just open up all the expansive stuff you guys are doing at driveline. Yeah, this year we didn't bring a net. We didn't bring any training equipment. I think people know what we're about on that side, right. on the weighted baseball side. Um, you know, we brought a lot of our sports science equipment. So we're really pushing R&D. Uh, a couple of our employees will be you know joining professional teams that haven't been announced. Uh, a lot of people that we've worked with are – joining as coaches. The pro right. side is changing so much. And so a lot of it is driven by sports science. At the sure. MLB Winter Meetings just recently, we met with 20-plus teams to talk about rolling out biomechanics initiatives at their place. Right. We're doing the Tour of America where we take our biomechanics lab to all sorts of schools, LSU mm -hmm. Shreveport, Vanderbilt, all, all sorts of places. And it's um, that's what we want to highlight is sure. that we're so much about sports science initiatives and coaching the coaches. That's what we're all about. I know this is going to be a really broad question, but I think it could take us down a couple different pathways. If I am – uh, any coach that's out here, of course, the youth and high school and college, even professional, what are some things from the uh, health and safety, from the biomechanical? I know it's such a broad question. What are some things that these coaches need to be brought up to speed on and then start and then start building up on? Yeah, I would say two things. One, you know, MLB's Pitch Smart is such a great initiative okay. on how to handle someone from age eight all the way up through high school. Yep. Uh, we, are, we adhere to their guidelines as well. I think it's awesome. I think the USA Baseball people do a great job. Um, We've been with them for a long time, working with the guys. Um, sure. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing I would like, how are you going to use, like, modus sleeves or stuff like that to mm -hmm. monitor workload? Yeah. And so the big thing is, like, you need to be familiar with Brian Conger. You know, Tarleton yes. State, very limited resources. But at the same time, Brian has such a good systematic approach, and he publishes everything openly on his Twitter. Yep. And so that's great for the college coach, and it's great for the dad. Like, yep. how do you how do you scale it? But then also, how do you even get started? Mm -hmm. And Brian, to me, is he's by far leading all of college baseball. Major Division One to Juke, I don't care. Brian's doing the best, uh, probably doing the most to keep his pitchers healthy out of anyone out there. And I, I, Yeah, so. Let's go down that rabbit hole. Okay, so the, I always lean on you, and I say, hey, man, who are the dudes out there that really get it? Yeah. And you obviously throw some names at me. We run with it. A lot of those guys are showing up on the podcast. For the ones that are out there, really, they're crushing it, man. They get it. They understand all the dynamics around it. Lay out from your perspective 
why they're being so successful and how they're implementing some of these programs. You know, yeah, because it's not about the technology and it's not about anything you spend on. It's about having a, a true system, you know. And so exactly. when I got my start with the Houston Astros, what I really noticed in 2012 and on when I started working there is that they were starting to really develop a system on how they were going to do things. You know, we're going to have scouts. They're going to contribute. Their reports are going to go into a database, and we're going to really systematize it. Like, this right. is happening. Then when they get drafted, we draft these kids. They go here for player development. The player development is going to be handled this way, this way, this way. There's yeah. a lot of individualism in it, but we're going to start with a basic scaffolding. Right. So where I think a lot of coaches get overwhelmed is like, oh, we can't individualize everything, and we can't do this. That makes It's true because yeah. you got to start with some sort of base level. So when I saw that with Houston – I really took that idea and ran with it and kind of built my business around the idea that we were going to have people. This is how employees are going to come in. This is how we're going to train them. Yeah. And this is the end result. And so it's, it's what leads to a great team culture is not like heavy metal music or yelling at the kids <laughs> or being um, uh, disagreeable on Twitter. It's, it's, re- it's really more about like we show the kids like what's possible, who, mm-hmm. what people have done where they're at now, where they're going, and all the steps along the way. And, you know, we're still trying to learn, yeah, but like right having, showing a kid that gives them ultimate confidence. And that's what we see the best of, whether it's Yeski or Woodard. Woodard is extremely meticulous. Yeski is not. You know, right. like he's, he doesn't use slides and that he's much more off. But like the way that he thinks is very integrated. Right. And Conger like handles other, the workload the way he does. It's all different, but it's the thing that unifies it is that they just write stuff down. It's what, it's what my dad always taught me at a young age. He's like, right. if you want to accomplish something, just write down everything you did every day. And at the, it. Yeah, at the end of the year, you're going to know what you do. You're going to look back, and if you're embarrassed to look back, then you know what happened. You know, so he's wow. like, just write everything down in a journal. It doesn't have to be expensive. You know, I still use a journal and pen and paper. You know, I think it's wow. the best way to go about it. So Old just school. really documenting it, documenting it is the way to go. So you know, knowing the way that I, the way that I do, um, I know you're in the spirit of, of constantly learning. It's obvious. Um, I still think you're the smartest dude in any room you walk into. I'll say that wow. for you. Yeah, wow. I'll give that Thank to you. you. Um, But also know you're humble enough to say that there's something recently that challenged you. Maybe it was an article you read, conversation you had, that maybe you went, actually, you know what? I could be doing that better. I could shift. I could move. What would that be? Yeah, I would say – I, I would say that our company has failed in a lot of regards on how we train new employees. You know, because I would say, oh wow, you know, it's we we don't do a, we hire a lot of the great college coaches, you know, yep. like junior college, and, because they've dealt with adversity, and that's really important to me that a coach has dealt mm. with some adversity in his life, personally or professionally. Yeah, it's kind of I'm a little biased because I come from a little tough situation, yep. you know, and so I've see that's what I see in good athletes and good coaches have overcome adversity no at doubt. a young age or no have doubt. dealt with something early, and so. And, and so that's a strength of the of this current coaching staff we have. It's very, um, you know, it's very varied from a former recruit of yours, Eric Jagers, no doubt. to no someone doubt. who's dealt with injuries. And I didn't like land them, by the way. So <laughs> apparently something went, something went awry. So from that to, like, great coaches like Bill Hessel from, you know, a D3, yep. uh, formerly the JUCO, it's great. But we need to do a better job of imparting, like, the technology initiatives that we're doing. Like, how, sure. how we need to get uh, a broader base. Like, instead of just hiring guys that have strong adversity and hoping they figure it out, right. which they do, um, we can't always do that. You know, hmm. the reason that we were faster than pro teams on Jason Ochart, who's the flavor of the month and everyone loves him here, is that is Jason here? Yeah, he's, <laughs> oh, he's talking to a thousand people, I'm sure. But we saw on Twitter, like, he documented his process and we were able to hire him. But now yeah. the pro teams, the Minnesota Twins, the Anaheim Angels, many other teams, they're doing that. So how do we become faster at hiring the 22, 23-year-old hmm. who hasn't yet proved himself yeah. and train him to be the best guy? And because we don't have that system, that's what challenged me. You know, pro teams are hiring the guys. They're hiring Jason Ocharts now. They're hiring those guys. And so for me, I got move faster so that challenged me um when i saw that so how do i get on that? i'm gonna play on a couple tweets i think you just walked right into that oh, spider boy. web oh, no. is no 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 <laughs> just just where the current state is yeah. and where things are going you, and you were tweeting a couple days ago about the hiring systems and yeah. the things that these coaches need to be aware of i'm just gonna open that door for you yeah it's uh, it's tremendous this year is gonna be it's great west johnson's gonna change it you know a friend of abc the game, yeah man. it's it, that was the linchpin right west going from arkansas to the big leagues with no stop in between that's right and then prior to that Derek johnson obviously vanderbilt to the cubs no and then moving up those types of things shift the industry permanently and so by seeing that um you're gonna see a lot of people who have like four and a half years of coaching college ball yeah. because they leave and then go to pro ball yeah. and so then Professional baseball is they want people that document their processes, that are going to integrate well, that have some technology background. And just and like I said in the Expo Theater, this right. stuff's not going to be optional. Right. I know we can fight against it, but like a system and how we develop players, it's no secret why the Astros win all the, all the time. You know, they have the number one pitching prospect and, you know, the number one prospect in the game, right. Forrest Whitley. You right. Know, uh, and other, you know, and they didn't have to trade him to get Garrett Cole or Justin Verlander. Yep. You know, so it's because they developed so many players below no that. You know, no and no. so that's that's the future of baseball, whether people know it or not. You know, like how the Astros do business generally yep. on player development. 
that's where everyone's going. So for me, to my advice to the coaches is to see that and then move in that direction. Like, how can I dominate Division One? How can I move up the ladder of college baseball, which yep. is always about results and documenting results in the age of social media, is like showing that that's how we're doing it. Right. Uh, and then also, if you have aspirations to go into pro ball, that's even more important. Just wow. being able to document that. So that's that's what I think is really important. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, I could go down a couple different places here. I do want to give you an opportunity because I think it's it's one that through social media we almost feel like we're there. And so when I see videos, when I watch you guys tweet, when I see, I feel like I'm 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 back where we were hanging out a couple months ago. That's right. And right in the middle of of the facility, take us into I think if we could taste and breathe and touch the culture of driveline and what's happening from the development end. And I'm, I mean the nuts and bolts of being in the cage, the competitions, live ABs, right. take us into all that. Yeah, and that's the big thing. You know, Jake McKinley, a good friend of mine, obviously yeah. spoke, and now with the Brewers. Yeah. Uh, Jake and I have talked a lot about this and why when you go to Menlo College or William Jessup or wherever he was, yeah. why it's the same energy. Why? No it's because it's competition. Jake always believed in ending a practice with a competition, yeah. right? Whether it's putting, a putting competition, kicking field goals, throwing strikes from 200 so feet awesome. away. No, it's great. And that's what we do at our place. It's always a competition, whether yeah. it's against yourself because it's the numbers. Here's how we're going to develop. Am I getting better myself? Or is it competing against someone else? Is it right. live at bats? Is it the fact that a high school kid could take live at bats off of Trevor Bauer right. or that Forrest Whitley, Nate Pearson, Kyle Muller, all top 100 prospects are going to face our college hitters they're going to come in and fit like it's tremendous they, wow. they love that competition so how often do you get to say you get to face a big leaguer you know and you're no gonna doubt. get embarrassed but at the end of the day like you're gonna learn right Couple guys got paid yeah, yeah that's right jason yeah <laughs> trevor was nice enough to pay we can get into that later <laughs> no but doubt. the fact that we have it, it's all around competition yeah. and then research like so there is very separated between like either we're competing or we're learning and we're competing at learning you know, right like that. and they we hold the staff to such a high standard on trying to get better we provide our staff with like two thousand dollars or even more research credit each person is given thousands of dollars of leeway to go fly somewhere to go learn something when i go to abc sure. barnstormer event that's happened Right? No we doubt. sent guys to that. No doubt. Uh, if they want to go fly to a sports science lab somewhere else, we pay for all of that. Because yep. you know what? Our guys need to get better. If they're not getting better, then they're, they're not improving. No but doubt. also the athletes aren't respecting them. If we're going to ask yep. the athlete to learn and get better and, and put in four hours a day of work, then the staff has to be held to a be higher standard. Yeah, even a higher no standard. Doubt. Right? So that's, that, and that's what, that's what fires up the athletes. Can we go into uh, – let's segment this and go into the pitching side. Obviously what Max and the whole crew have done on that side of things. Uh, go down the pitching element, talking pitch design. Uh, you know, obviously, see Eric does a fantastic job with the with the uh, tweets and stuff that he's yep. doing. I don't even get into the camera systems that you have in place, but yep. but from a pitching standpoint, um, how how much have you progressed in where? Let's just go back. Let's give you a, just a, a number here of three years ago. Sure, three years ago, which you thought you knew about pitch development, pitch design. To where you stand right now? Yeah, since we're the validation partners for Rapsodo, and we yeah. work close so closely with TrackMan, we've helped push those products, right? And we're really proud to do that. So a lot of it is just having like good, you know, good data on that. So no you know, and it's amazing how fast the game changed. Like I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, three, four years ago, uh, Trevor Bauer and I worked very hard on developing a two-seam fastball. You'll watch it in the game; it looks, just looks like Greg Maddox's fastball. It's a tremendous pitch. Yeah. The problem is, is what people swing on, swing at it, like it's pretty, pretty bad results actually. Yeah, no doubt. So. The game changed in two years, like, so quick that a sinker slider guy in the big leagues ended up being, like, quite worse. Like, now it's a four-seam curveball game, and that happens so fast. Yeah, so how is he going to adapt? Now we got to add a slider, now we got to do this, this, and this. And that's what Trevor always talks about. It's this consistent learning and consistent, like, you have to get better as a pitcher in the big leagues. It's tough. You have to get better every year just mm -hmm. to tread water. No doubt. Because the hitters are getting better and better. I know hitters are striking out more and more, and we're talking about this. But as a, as a quick as I'll tell a quick story, Brandon, Brandon McCarthy calls me, yep. and he says, I'm, I'm going to retire. I just want to let you know. And I said, you know, it's been a great career. We're talking. And I said, if you just had a you know, quick question, like, was there a linchpin moment? What, what caused you to, to, to retire? You know, one thing. And he tells me a story. He's like, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, well, I'm with Atlanta, and I'm on the DL, and I'm contemplating whether or not I want to hang it up. Uh, the Rays open up a kid throwing 100, Cuban kid, right? Strikes out the first guy, Ronald Acuna hits a double, and then Ozzy Albies hits a, a two-run bomb. Right. He comes in, and Brandon's like, was it flat? Like, did he miss? What's the deal? It was a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. And Ozzy Albies is just like, it's just, it's just 100. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> and Brandon's like, yep. Yeah, it's time. To, that's it. That's it. It's time, to, come that's, up, it's time to quit. That's, that's too much, honestly. So a lot of it is like, the, it, so fastball velocity has never been more important in the game because yep. you've got to get in and you have to pitch around it, but it's yep. never been less important because the hitters get exposed to it. So True. it's 100%. pretty interesting that you have to actually learn to pitch. It's a big part of where we're at. Like velocity, as uh, our story is pushing that forward, sure. and I'm proud of it, and people do need to throw hard because there's not a lot of 86 mile an hour throwers in the game. Sure. But like the hitters are getting a lot better. Well, I know it doesn't look like that, but being able to get those guys out is actually pretty hard.
hard. So Gosh. it's a lot of fun to talk about that. Trevor's an intriguing cat, and I think a lot of guys would be uh, – you can kind of break into your relationship, number one. But more importantly, how is he engineered? Because, man, that, that dude just seems like he is constantly – if there's a better way, I want to find it. If there's a better way, a better way to get batters out, I want to find it. I want to figure it out. I want to improve. Take me into him. Yeah, so – we met in 2012, and our relationship has developed since then. Right. We're good personal friends now and off the field. You know, it's it's adversarial. We yell at each other every so often. You know, I <laughs> mean, course. we compete, you know, at no the end doubt. of the day. Uh, he, he's going to have respect for someone who's dealt with some adversity. You know, sure. so if he, if he thinks – that's why he loved doing the $1,000 stuff with the minor leaguers. Yeah. He's like, these kids are dealing with adversity, uh, and I'm not going to give them the money. they got to earn it. No you doubt. Know, but at the end of the day, that, that's what fuels him because that, that's what's going to make him better. Sure. You know, so I would say that he's really driven by competition. That's the number one thing. He yep. loves playing the game. He's only going to sign one-year deals because he wants to bet on himself. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun stuff that I think the fans can I really identify that, yeah. with. You know, it's like this kid's going to bet on himself. He's not going to sign a $300 million deal and quit. He's going to be a guy that only – wants to bet on himself and he always wants to learn he's like what's gonna what's gonna be i want to win a Cy young every year you know that's his expectation wow. whether it's gonna happen or not you know he probably came close this year if he didn't break his leg yep. it'd have been close between him and the local product blake snell yep. you know but like at the end of the day that's his expectation he's like i want to pitch for team usa it's his big dream uh on the on the, on the pro side yeah. he's pitched for the college yeah. side yeah. he's like but I, he's like, i want to wear the colors and i want to just win a Cy young every time so what do i got to do to do that every wow. year he's always asking how can i get better what do i need to do to get better and so he puts his faith in someone like me and our saber metric analyst like Dan O'Coin and Eric yep. Jagers to be like, here's the things that you need to get better. He has his own ideas, of course. I'm not saying that he doesn't. But then he trusts us to help him. And he uses other people, like Bob Kai's obviously been at ABC yeah. for, yeah, for decades. No right? So Bob does his biomechanics at the end of the season. He has a nice footprint. He goes and sees a Stanford doctor, this, that. So he has a, a team of people he surrounds himself with that he's always trying to get better. And it's just mm. base of operations is that drive line. And, I'm, you know, I'm, we're not threatened yeah. by any of that. Every, everyone can offer something, you know. And he loves talking to Jason. You know, I know he gives him a lot of, uh, a lot of guff online, you know, but but like he, he wants to get in the mind of a hitter. What are they actually thinking? What are you going through the process? Because when he watched Jason, he's like, that's the future of hitting. Like every big league hitting coach is going to be doing what Jason Ochart's doing. So I need to learn why. Why does he do that? How does he get the guys better? What is he thinking? i got to be ahead of Jason. Right. So it's a really fun relationship. Oh. Those two have a great relationship. They actually live together. So they have a great relationship. Oh, they're yeah. super competitive. So yeah, they, are. they are. Yeah, they are. Well, they're... take the same three-year question and take that into hitting. So where were we three years ago at the drive-long facility compared to now? Yeah, well, we gave Jason, I said, you're going to come in, you're going to have a budget of $30,000, you're going to have a hit tracks in a cage, and I don't really care what you do. <laughs> so he comes in after playing in Sweden and having some fun. He comes in, and he's just like, all right, you know, what's the hitting program, and how am I going to take it over? And yeah. I said, there, there isn't one. You can do whatever you want. And Jason, sure. like, just straight up didn't believe that I was going to let him do whatever he wanted. I said, you're, you're the expert. I hired you. I paid you. You know, you do it. So then we went wow. from nothing to a constant amount of improvement. He's taken some L's along the way about how he wants to do things, but he's, he's such a good feel for hiring and, and bringing people in. Um, and then what he's done a good job of is really developing a system around the technology. Right. That took a long time. No doubt. The fly, what we call it the research flywheel. It takes a long time to get it going. On the pitching side, it took us years to really get it going, like from research to figuring something out to application, which right. fuels the research and over and over and over again. We're almost there on the hitting side. So we have, like, blast motion, hit tracks, so wow. forth. And so we have these reports that our interns do a great job of saying, like, the player's like, hey, my attack angle, my exit velocity, blah, blah, blah. It's not about any of those metrics necessarily. You know, I, th I can see why the old school coach glazes over when he hears that. Yep. It's about production, right? Yep. These are the things that are strongly correlated to production. These are the things that work. These are things that don't. And we have, like, one unified score that we can actually say, this guy's barreling balls better. We're testing a guy. We're actually just using – Old school stuff that Ed Chef was doing at LC State yeah. decades ago oh, about like, th these kids just it should practice and they should expect failure every single day. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get them to fail every single day here to yep. learn something about themselves, to be adaptable, to move on from there. And so you know, Ed really had it right uh, in some regards. Yeah, in perhaps, some regards, perhaps the boxing and all that, oh, not so much. The stories but. are legendary. <laughs> yeah. um, you just mentioned failure, and obviously it's prevalent in what we do, and especially from the hitting side of things. Um, what are some things, if you can pull back the curtain a little bit, that maybe you mentioned a little bit ago, that maybe we failed at from the hitting side? What would you offer? You know, I think it's a lot of the integration. We're finding out more and more on the pitching and the hitting side, which we've always – my start was getting into barbell training and powerlifting. Right. And I always, I've always thought power and strength is important. Yep. Uh, but on the hitting side, I think we've really vastly underestimated how important that is. Like our relationship with TPI, with Dr. Greg Rose and yep. on base you and all that, yep. has been great from a postural and movement screen side. Like I think that's been huge. Max yep. Gordon leads that initiative for us. Yep. 
Um, but the big side of it, we're finding it more and more. It's just like s simple power, rotation power, like power from the ground up. Uh, is just clean. Not, not only cleans up some mechanical issues on the hitting side, but yep. also is just like is required to continue moving on. Like you're not going to be able to teach a guy advanced hitting movements, uh, like how to move their body through space and proprioception unless they're strong enough, powerful enough, right. and on that side. So we're finding out more and more that the high performance, the strength side of it, is like incredibly valuable. Which I, I think some. Some people really discount the value of that. And just like mm. being grossly strong and being yeah. able to use, be able to tap into that over time is actually probably one of the most important things. If you're a father, 14-year-old hitter, sure. the number one thing they need to do is just go into the LA Fitness, the high school gym, and they need to lift three, four days a week. They need to get on a very basic program like starting strength. Yeah. They need a squat bench, deadlift. They just need to do pull-ups. And they need to get really strong. And then from there, you get to do all the fun stuff. That's but it. you can't do the fun stuff until we get just really strong. Like that's right. the most – I would say that's the biggest thing on the hitting side that I think is really important. I love it. Okay. Couple more questions I got for you. One is, you know, I'm going back to our podcast episode, and we really that timing of that was around the draft, and we're spending a lot of time talking about, especially to coaches that are listening to this. If I'm a, of a youth or especially a high school coach, I'm looking at guys that potentially could get drafted. If I'm a college coach, and I've got those those juniors, if I'm a junior college coach, my freshmen or sophomores, and I'm looking at them going, man, there's organizations that if you get drafted by, I, I'm a little scared of what might happen because you you know too much yeah and i know that you know too much so if we're looking at all 30 clubs let these guys know fill them in update them educate them on maybe the current state of major league baseball organizations yeah there's a handful of clubs if you're a high school kid you know there's a handful of clubs you really want to be drafted by yep. because of player development on the college side if you're a first it's a top rounder those might not be the best fit because they do such a good job of developing guys you might right. want to go to another <laughs> better bet on yourself it's yeah. true yeah uh, but there's some organiza there's a lot of organizations that are pretty adversarial to long toss you know, hitting fly balls. No doubt. Um, there's a, there's an organization. There's two organizations in Florida. They they share a complex. I'll be I'll be nice. Okay. They share a complex. One of them, uh, all their hitters use blast motion sensors. Every single every hitter has a blast motion sensor, and yep. they hit the fourth coach records all the data. Sees like is exit velocity dropping? What's their launch angle over time? Right. Like wow. monitors throughout the season. Yep. They do laser timing of, of tens and thirties and sixties in season. Are they getting slower? Wow. Right. They do force plate testing. Like this. By the way, these two teams share a complex. Okay. The other team has to take. Uh, all breaking balls has to take 1 0, 2 1, all plus count fastballs. And if they hit the ball up above like a five degree launch angle, they get yelled at. And they, they share a complex. So I'm like, you know, what could it possibly be like to play those games? I hope they're hearing this. I hope yeah. They're, yeah, you know, yeah. it's fine. They know who they are. No, 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 not <laughs> them. I just hope you guys yeah. are hearing this. So like, it's funny to see like if those two play games, like we had one with the, with, the, with the not great organization, and then they play the other team across the street, and they're just like, how is this possible? Right. You know, so to get that list and to know that, like, you know, Alan Jager and yep. I and Eric Cressy, yep. no all doubt. three of us work on that list Fantastic every single episode, year. We put yeah. a ton of time into it. And so we talk to new draftees and say, and we talk to agents. So there's, like, great agencies that pay attention to that. Yep. So I'm not going to name any great names. I'm not going to name what good names or bad names for agencies are. But there's, there's some great people here that are actually agents that come to this event yep. to talk to coaches. Uh, that do a good job of, of staying ahead of that. It's like, hey, it's not about another ten thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars. Right. It's like, you need to hit your projection. If you're going to be a guy that signs in the eleventh round, it really doesn't matter like no how doubt. much money. You're not going to get any money. So how about let's focus on fo arranging you to the right team. Yep. You know, like like tell these teams have have the confidence to tell these teams you're not interested and you want to go somewhere else. Right. You know? uh, and if you're a top round guy, you, you, sometimes it's out of your control. But at least you can, like, make it known. Like, this is the direction I want to go. This is what I'm going to do. And if it's going to be a problem, eh, you know. Yeah. It's because like, if you're going to be a top 10 pick or top 30 pick, it's like you're going to pitch You're going to pitch in the big leagues. That's right. You know, you're, that's your expectation. Yeah. So do you want to, like, do you want to fight the organization every day and go to work and have a problem? Or do you want to, like, go to an organization with a growth mindset? No doubt. And that's changing over time for sure. Like, it's rapidly changing towards the good. Yeah. But there's still still a lot of pitfalls out there. I'd probably say eight, 8 to 10 teams you really don't want to play for if you, if you care about development. That's where we're at, 8 to 10 out of 30. It's a tough situation, yeah. I got yeah. All right, when we're looking at the Dallas Convention, what are your goals, man? What did you walk in here and want to accomplish? Uh, man, that's a, that's a great that's a wow, that's a great question. We asked the tough spot. questions here. The, man. That is a tough question. That's why I love you. <laughs> um, I have a in the interest of being completely open. Um, I, I, what I'd really like to do, uh, I'd like to be a pitching coordinator, I think, like Jason. Yep. Uh, being able to do a part-time thing and stay at driveline. I'm, I'm in discussions with a few teams, actually, to, Good. to do that. Awesome. Um, well deserved. And uh, eventually, you know, I think the game is going in the right direction, that if, if it really goes in this direction and data and the way that we stay on top, then yep. I think it makes sense that I'll be a big league pitching coach someday, honestly, uh, within the next five Love to six it. years. Um, we've already had some discussions with some teams on how that might happen over yep. time. 
Um, but I, I see it being a top-down approach where the big league coach is going to be talking to, like, he's going to arrange the organization. Uh, no different than, like, the White Sox, right? right. Don Cooper from the top down. This yeah. is what we care about the White Sox. Yeah. Dave Duncan with the, the, the Cardinals. Yeah. We care about ground balls, sinkers, pitching at the bottom of the zone, right? Yeah. These are the guys that we want. Cool. Well, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but, like, that's the direction they go. And um, someday I'd like to be able to prove that I can do that. You know, I'm 35 now. Yeah. Um, you know, past 40, I think those are some, some things I'd like to, to explore. Um, well, beyond that, as far as driveline goes, I'm really passionate about improving the side of pitching, the training side, like yeah. uh, training our employees. I think yeah. we failed there. That's what I'm passionate about, improving that. Uh, and uh, really constantly just research and development has been so much fun to expand our team to seven just extremely brilliant people from backgrounds all over the place. Um, right. Our electrical engineer is, is a woman. Uh, we've, we had a 16-year-old female intern who pitches in high school in college awesome. in, ca- in California and chops kids. Yeah. Uh, so we have a really diverse group of people in research that I think we can learn from all of them. And it's, it's been so much fun on the research side. And I'm ready really to turn it over to Joe Marsh to do a lot of the work and for me to really take another step forward on the pitching side and, and, and do that. Because, like, we've done such a good job on research, we're not even really using all the all the technology there, and yeah. I think we need to do a better job there. So it's about training our employees and getting that and getting it accessible to the coaches out there. And that, no that's doubt. my and that, – you know, you know Mike. Know. That, that's, know. Mike's, that's Mike's biggest thing. Yep. I totally agree with them, and i, I got to do a better job on training the guys and doing – I'm not saying I'm doing a bad job, but you know me. I could always do a better job on that side. I love yeah. it, gosh. So. First of all, I'm so motiv- motivated by this friendship, man. I'm telling you, you, you – you set such a standard every day. Like, I got to step my tweet game up. That's one thing. <laughs> but it, it, it's more of just the, the constant state of learning, that growth mindset. Like, uh, to me, that's the standard. And I think we all need to strive towards that. And it's certainly something that motivates me. When you get your big league pitching job, yep. I'm your PFP fungo hitter. PFP, f- yeah. You make it happen. How are you on stingers? Uh, as right. good as you can get. Ooh. Drop them on home plate all day long. Oh, let's go. All that's day long. That's it. That's all we need. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks for jumping on with us, Kyle. Man, keep crushing thanks the Dallas me. convention. Look forward to catching up. Thanks again. for having me, Sheets. No doubt, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you.